Good morning, everybody. Brian Newbert here again from goldenblack.com. I apologize. We're a little bit late today with this, but I had to make my uh, weekly smash and grab grocery run. And um, who knew that when life as we knew it came to an end, or at least a hard pause, there would be no Tostitos with lime. Uh, anyway, um, this is your, uh, your daily goldenblack.com daily, which is redundant, quarantine uh, simulcast for Thursday, April, whatever it is. I believe it's the 16th. Um, it has all run together, uh, but this is, again, our, our little daily content item we're doing. I hate the word content. I have to stop using it. Our little daily thing uh, we do over a, a variety of platforms to kind of keep you guys engaged, keep you talking about Purdue, keep you thinking about Purdue, just perhaps help you pass the time if you need your time passed. Um, this is brought to you by uh, our friends, Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. I want to remind you once again, as I will every single day, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant in Lafayette, Arnie's literally all over the place, all over the state, and Bruno's in West Lafayette remain open for carryout orders, uh, as do our friends at the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette. I uh, want you to, just want to ask you to keep them in mind if you're looking for damn good food or just want to support our local businesses, or preferably a combination thereof. Um, the best way to support local businesses is via damn good food, if you ask me. Um, anyway, we are coming, we are scraping the bottom of the barrel here a little bit for stuff to talk about. Um, I do want your ideas. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, please feel free to email me, bnewbert, and e u b e r t at goldenblack.com if you have any topics you'd like to hear about. I will. I have a couple emails that I haven't responded to yet. I will use those topics most likely, uh, provided they're not crazy, uh, and perhaps even if they are. Um, we will get to some of those next week, I, I assure you. do want to remind you also, um, if you're accessing this via YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Once normalcy resumes, there will be lots of uh, produce stuff on there, and that would be the best way to make sure you're, you, you are getting that in a timely manner. All right, with all that being said, the intro portion of this is getting longer and longer each time I do this. I promise you this isn't a 15-minute commercial every day. Yesterday, what I did was like five things or whatever it is, um, whatever it was about Purdue's basketball season next year that I think are particularly important. I guess in the spirit of equal time, um, we will do the same for football, only I'm doing three things. I could give you a million things. I could give you a thousand things, starting with the most important thing have a season. Um, because obviously that's the single biggest question around football uh, everywhere right now is have a season. Um, but if there is a season, uh, I just picked out three things that maybe aren't necessarily top of mind. And again, I could list a thousand things, you know, obviously stay healthy, obviously get the quarterback situation figured out, obviously improve at the line of scrimmage. On down the line, there are a million things you can talk about with football, but I wanted to—I I just wrote down three quick ones um, that I think are particularly important and maybe not top of mind for everyone when you kind of look at the season superficially uh, to come and think, God, this is really important. They have to do this. Um, so those three things basically are starting off um, third and long defense. Uh, you know, Purdue obviously is going in a different direction defensively. I think the defense and offense alike were both ravaged by injuries last year. Both had disappointing seasons. Um, obviously, Purdue's going in a different direction defensively, even though obviously last season they were held back by debilitating injuries to Marcus Bailey and Lorenzo Neal. That being said, obviously, um, some days were better than others for, for Purdue defensively. Wanted to do something differently kind of moving forward. I think wanted to be a little bit more uh, unpredictable uh, in what they do. Uh, that would be my guess in terms of the thinking there. I don't know, but obviously Bob Diaco comes in as the defensive coordinator. May or may not be going full-scale 3-4 from here on out. At the very least, it's going to be part of what Purdue does, we think. We don't necessarily know much of anything at this point, but they are at least implementing 3-4, whether that's their base defense 100% of the time or simply something they phase in and use kind of situationally or go out there ideally with the ability to do either uh, based on the situation, down and distance, personnel, whatever it may be. I don't know, but um, they are moving in that direction. Either way, they have to get better in third and long defense. They have to get better against the pass. I think that is 
probably the singular. Obviously, in the Big Ten, everybody talks about you have to stop the run. You have to run the ball and you have to stop the run. But I think Purdue's really struggled for years now uh, against the pass. And that a lot goes into that. That, that That's your pass coverage. That's your, that's your linebacker's ability to cover the pass. That's your ability, especially, to get after the get after the quarterback, um, which hasn't exactly been Purdue's strength for a couple of years. Obviously, George Karloffis and Derek Barnes, I thought, both had good seasons last year as pass rushers. Um, but a lot goes into stopping the pass, and Purdue especially has to get better on third down against the pass. Purdue especially has to get better at third and long against the pass because they gave up a lot of first downs last year where you need to get off the field, whether it's – third and 11, third and 12, whatever it may be, that was not Purdue's strength, uh, obviously. Purdue has to get better there. Part of that is invigorating your pass rush one way or another, whether that's creative fronts, whether that's more aggressiveness, whether that's disguising your coverages differently. Whatever it might be, uh, Purdue has to find a way to be better. Uh, Purdue um, was just under 41% um, in terms of, of opponent's conversion rate on third down. I don't have it itemized in terms of what it was in third and long, which typically is third and seven or longer. Um, but I don't think that number would be pretty good if, um, if uh, I had access to that number. The second one I wrote down is short yardage offense. Um, obviously, I think for as long as Jeff Brom is here, the job description on offense is to make chunk plays, make big plays, uh, make explosive plays, be creative on offense. But Inevitably, you're gonna you're gonna end up in situations where it's third and two, third and one, second and three, whatever it may be. And if you're not ideally suited uh, to run the ball between the tackles, which Purdue has not been and most likely will not be anytime soon in terms of ideal personnel, ideal mentality, whatever it might be, you have to get better there. And if you're not better there in terms of what you're able to do, don't do it. Don't try to run on third and one right up the middle, um, if that's not necessarily the strength of your personnel. Purdue's got to, f- got to figure things out there a little bit and just be better on the downs where you need to be at a high conversion rate. I don't know how many times last season. Again, I don't necessarily have data on this, just basically anecdotal, but there were a lot of third and ones where Purdue lined up and didn't work. Um, Purdue's got to get better there. In Purdue's defense offensively all across the board, th- this is very important. Purdue obviously didn't have Elijah Sindelar most of the season, didn't have Rondell Moore most of the season. Your offense, the offense you prepared to have all season long and you you practiced with in the spring and you practiced with in training camp was built around two things. One, Rondell Moore getting him the ball. However much you could get him the ball in any number of ways, whatever way you can get him the ball, as much as you could get him the ball, you were getting him the ball and Elijah Sindelar's right arm. I think when you look at uh, some of the success Purdue had early in the season, uh, whether it was portions of the Nevada game, the entirety of the Vanderbilt game, I think that was Elijah Sindelar basically dropping back and chucking it. Um, The first drive of the season at Nevada was the template. It was quick. It was up-tempo. It was Sindelar dropping back, getting it out quick, not worrying about having to pass protect for a couple seconds, whatever it may be. That was Purdue's template for the season to me. Um, Obviously, you didn't have much of a chance to see it because he got hurt against Vanderbilt at the end of that game. Rondell Moore got hurt a couple weeks later. And the personnel you built your offense around in the offseason was no more. So I think that had a lot to do with, obviously, Purdue's struggles all season long. But I, I thought at times Purdue exacerbated its own struggles by doing things that didn't necessarily play to its strengths. What its strengths exactly were on offense last season, I don't necessarily know what the personnel it was trying to trying to use. But I think there were a lot of games where you just – it's really hard to just – block in the Big Ten and get that yard and just kind of move people off the line of scrimmage. I don't think that's Purdue strength. I don't think that's going to be Purdue strength anytime soon. Purdue has to be better, though, in those short yardage situations, whether it's misdirection, whether it's east-west stuff, whether it's it's screens, whatever it may be. I think Purdue's got to be better in those higher percentage uh, sort of down situations, obviously. And the last one is a fairly obvious one, special teams. I think, um, you know, Purdue was last in the Big Ten, I believe, in kickoff return yardage last season. It was second to last in the Big Ten in punting. 
that stuff adds up, you know, and uh, I think Purdue's on its fourth special teams coach in four years, which is probably not ideal, um, but it's, it's kind of the nature of it. I don't think that's as big a deal from a continuity perspective as it would be an offense coordinator, defense coordinator, uh, whichever. Marty Biaggi comes in um, as Purdue special teams coach. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Um, I have not heard it spoken uh, yet uh, anywhere by someone who would know. Um, but I think Purdue has, again, a special teams guy, uh, somebody who is a special teams coach through and through, as opposed to having a guy who is a coach is another position, but also has some special teams experience. Um, he's known for his creativity. And, uh, I think that's important because when you go back to Jeff Brown's first year at Purdue, when Tony, Tony Levine was here, um, or at Purdue, not here in this room, um, you know, Purdue wasn't the best across the board special teams team in the country, but special teams affected games. They impacted the games. And I think that's what you want more than anything. You obviously want to be solid in special teams. Again, all those hidden yards add up and end up impacting the game. But I think if you can just make a player to a game that affect the game, whether it's a big return, whether it's a conversion on, on a fourth down that, you, you know, you didn't necessarily have to line up your offense to get, whether it's um, punch down inside the five, whatever it might be. Purdue just needs to impact the game more on special teams than it has the last couple of years. That's exactly what they have in mind by bringing in Marty Biaggi again. I hope I am pronouncing his name correctly. I don't know. Um, but special teams weren't great last season. Special teams, in a perfect world, you'd like them to be an advantage for you, but they certainly can't be a disadvantage for you if you intend to win a lot of football games. And you're not that much better than everyone else on the other in the other phases of the game, which Purdue most likely won't be. So that's kind of what I got here. That's uh, third and long defense, specifically passing defense, short yardage offense, specifically third and short offense, and special teams all across the board. So those are three uh, kind of big picture, probably not big picture, but sort of minutia. Um, obviously, as I said before, I could list off a thousand things about the football season next year that are the keys to produce success, offensive line play, defensive line play, pass rush, all that obvious stuff, run the ball better, all the obvious stuff beyond have a season. Um, but I thought, I thought, I thought these three things in particular, uh, were, were really, really important. So I figured I would talk about those. So I did. Um, that's what I got for today. Uh, Thursday, this has been your golden uh, daily quarantine Simulcast. It'll be available on YouTube, goldenblack.com, uh, on our Golden Black Radio podcast platform here. Uh, well, now, if you're watching it, it's available now. I don't know what I'm, why I'm talking in real time to myself while I do this. You're watching this, so it's available now. And you've already found it, so you don't know where to find it. This has been brought to you by Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. I want to remind you again, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant in Lafayette, Bruno's in West Lafayette, Arnie's all over the place, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette remain open for carryout orders. So if you want to support local business, get some damn good food, or both, please keep them in mind. The Sixth Street Dive, Arnie's, Bruno's, and the Whitaker Inn. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you again uh, tomorrow on Friday. Thanks.